And a decade went by, and all of a sudden, I kind of felt a little bit weird. I felt kind of unmotivated, unenergized, not very excited, not very inspired. And I went in and I talked to my boss, Larry Ellison, who's the CEO of Oracle, and I said, I'm not feeling that great. I think I need to take some time off. He said, go for it. Good idea. Very supportive. So there I was, kind of a lost 30-something, and I did what all lost 30-somethings do. I went to India. <laughs> and I went to India, and I took with me one of my really good friends, Arjun Gupta. And we were touring India, and Arjun was born in New Delhi, but he had never been through India, and I wanted to go through India, and I had all this time off, and I was going to make good use of it and do something I couldn't normally do. And we hit all these great cities from the north to the south, from the east to the west. And then I'll tell you, something amazing happened. Something amazing happened. Arjun and I ended up in a little hut, a little hut in a little area of India in the south and called Kerala, in a little city called Trivandrum. And Arjun and I were sitting in a little hut with a guru. A guru is an incredible female saint. All the saints in the south of India are female. And we were kind of confessing our lives and our worries and our concerns and our anxieties and our fears and talking about life and what we had accomplished and, you know, while we, that we wanted to change and we were on our quest. And we were sitting there in that hut. And it was kind of fun. And amazing at the same time and incense was kind of wafting over us and candles were flickering, monks were chanting, and Arjun was getting ready to start this new venture capital company and he decided to take out his business plan. And he took out his business plan and he started reading it to the saint. And for an hour he talked about the future technology, it was going to the cloud and it was going mobile and it was going to they have social networks and a trillion sensors and everything in the world is going to get connected together. And she sat there so patiently for an hour. And it was a great, it was great. It was amazing. I was inspired by him. And then at the very end, she turned to him. She turned to him after listening to his whole business plan and said this, Arjun, while you are working so hard to change the world and create all this great technology, and I'm sure all of it will come to pass. Don't forget, don't forget to do something for others. And Arjun was kind of taken back a little bit, and I felt like she was talking to me. And I kind of felt like I just found what I was looking for. So we left, actually the next day was our time to go home, and I said, Arjun, I think that our challenge and what she's setting out here, the gambit, is how are we going to put this together? How are we going to put this together? And honestly, we really had no idea. We had no idea. And we got, home, we got on the airplane the next day and we went back to San Francisco and I went back to my desk at Oracle and he went off to start his company. And just as I arrived back at my office, I got a phone call. It was a fateful call to attend something called the President's Summit for America's Future. And it was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I went out there, it was, it was incredible. I, I, I arrived in this huge conference room and it was being chaired by General Colin Powell, one of the great Americans, and the five living presidents of the United States. Nancy Reagan was representing Ronald Reagan. And everyone in the audience were kind of the CEOs and the leaders of these major corporations of the United States. And General Powell stood up and he said, ladies and gentlemen, I brought you here today to tell you something very important. And it was a motivating speech. It was inspiring and then he ended it. And he said, just remember this, get out there and do something for other people. And then I said, wow, I just was in India hearing this from Amici, and now I'm in Philadelphia hearing it from Colin Powell, the same message, and I said to myself, I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting it here. I think I'm understanding what is coming through me. But today, Salesforce.com is doing great. We have more than 13,000 employees. We'll do more than $5 billion in revenue this year. We're heading into the Fortune 500, the top 500 companies in the world. 
We are Fortune Magazine's most admired software company for 2014. We are Forbes' most innovative company in the world for three years in a row. And we are Fortune Magazine's best place to work number seven this year in the world. Thank you. Thank you.